Hello, welcome to Stellaris. I'm probably one of 5,000 different people on YouTube playing this game. So if you want to learn anything about the game, watch somebody else. Um, I'm just going to goof around, um, show you what I've done so far, and just play the game, you know? And maybe have some interesting commentary. I don't know. Um, I have t t two kingdoms here. I'm going to restart this one. Um, for this series. I don't know if it's going to even be a series, but I'll show you the Nebarite Galactic Kingdom. This is the one that I'm just playing on my own time. Um, this will be the first episode of who knows. I don't even know if it'll keep going, uh, but we'll see. Uh, so, let's go to home world. Nebarite, the Nebarite Galactic Kingdom. Um, their homeworld is Kafev, and this is actually a custom solar system that I designed myself. You can actually do that with Stellaris. Um, you can edit text files in the uh, source folder, common, you know, Steam apps, common Stellaris, um, and you can make your own solar systems that way. So I made this one myself. It's a little finicky to figure out how to do it, um, but we have Belovi, um, or Belovi. It's a main sequence blue star, one of them big old blue stars. And then Marcadio over here is a gas giant, and Kafev is a moon of that gas giant. And there's another one, a Dumbra. Uh, Istis here was supposed to be a moon, but it got, um, uh, I made the distance a little too far away. I mean, a little too close. It wasn't far away enough. And Getrachi is another one. Got a few moons there. Which is pretty cool. I really like how this ended up turning out. Um, so far with the Nebarite Galactic Kingdom, I've colonized two planets. <laughs> my home world and Iriamis over here. Um, and then I'm working on getting Vermilion... Um, Vermilion 1 is a tropical world, which is perfect for my species because they came from a tropical world. So I'm trying to... I'm working on getting this colonized. Um, this is a nice solar system here. But, what I'm gonna do uh, is, instead of playing this one, I'm gonna play... I'm gonna start a fresh one. So let's go to the desktop. No, menu, not the desktop. That would be bad. Um, new game. The Inovan Expansion. This is another custom um, thing. Um, I created this species um, and actually, they're based on um, creatures that I made up for... I wrote a bunch of short stories, um, and the Kikaria, that's the plural of Kikari, were all part of them. They were the main thing. What is Iron Man mode? Console cheats are disabled. There's no turning back. That's fine by me. Turn it on. Do it. Um, let's do two advanced AI stars and ten empires. Spiral, galaxy, medium stars. Okay. Alright, here is the, uh, Karat systems, one that I made up. Um, and so I had written these short stories and I had actually invented this solar system pretty much exactly how it looks. Um, there's a few things missing, um... For instance, the gas giants don't have all the moons, of course, but this is the closest I've ever get gotten to actually uh, visualizing this solar system proper uh, properly. Um, it's a little tricky working with the uh, text files to make something like this actually happen, um, but it's really cool. Uh, so let's start here. This is Karit, and actually... Let's get this going. Get one of these science ships. Survey the system. Almost 
speed. Okay. So Karat, it's a normal... It's not a normal, it's a star very similar to our sun. And then Dysta is a red dwarf. Um, something I found is that if you make a star... You can make binary systems, which is something I just found out. You can make binary systems this way. The only problem is the secondary star will always, even though this is a red dwarf, it doesn't look like a red dwarf. It um, takes on the appearance of the uh, main star, but it still it still counts as a red dwarf. Jack tie. It's a uh, molten world. <laughs> Ray is also a molten, molten world. Seraphina and Vivian are binary, uh, binary planets, which of course is probably impossible at such a close proximity to the star. Um, but whatever. And then next up is Novo, Ocean World. I'm gonna get them started. Uh, let's see here. This is probably a good place for. Ooh, that's a good place for a mine. Actually, let's build a power plant right there. And we'll move you up there. Okay. Uh, there's Inovo. It has a moon. It has rings, too, which I'm very happy about because it's supposed to have rings. Um, then there's Ganyeda, which is where I hope the, the anomaly ends up because... In the short stories that I wrote, Ganiedo was the really mysterious, weird planet that caused a lot of cool things. Whatever. Um, had a lot of cool things going on. Uh, Bayan. Actually, no, Melantha is next. Melantha, similar to Jupiter. I don't know why all the planets are tilted to a ridiculous degree like that. Oh, well. So, Alice, I had to put a planet named Alice, um, because I am a huge fan of Alice in Wonderland, um, to the point that it doesn't really show up that much in my work, like in Relics of Hyrule. It, it makes some appearances in Relics of Hyrule, but my love for Alice in Wonderland is so strong that I need to do it right, or else not do it at all. <laughs> um... There's some other planets in there. Sylvia, Aiden. Aiden's like Io. Uh, then there's... What else is in here? Bion, which I was going to talk about earlier. Very similar to... Uh, Saturn. Has a moon there. And then there's... Cotavatra. Similar to Uranus in some ways. Um, and ironically... That, why do they all look the same? I don't know. Well, it doesn't matter. It has its own world. It's not tilted over like um, Uranus is. And finally, Kanoon. Kanoon was another mis mysterious planet in um, blah, in uh, the stories. Um, and it has its own little moon there. Similar to sort of a dwarf planet. And it's fitting that uh, Mira is... This is a great place for the asteroid belt. Are there any... Is there anything in this system that I can mine? Because that thing's been going around for a while, and it hasn't found anything. It still hasn't found any resources. So yeah, this game... It's pretty complicated. Um, at least to me. Maybe... I know one of the criticisms that people have had is that it's not complicated enough, that, that you get to a point and it just sort of stops. And I'm like, what? Okay. That's fine. I don't know. I like it. It's sort of like, um... Um... Spore. The space phase of Spore. But with the space phase of Spore, all you did was like go around and collect spice and things, and it it was it did did did, did it, you could colonize planets, but there wasn't any sort of drive to do so. With Stellaris, it feels like there's actually a reason to. Um, anyway, the Kakaria, they are um, scientists. That's their whole thing. They're 
their goal is to pursue scientific endeavors. Um, I'm gonna clear this out. Um, and I should also build one of these. Because when I... Something I ran into with those mushroom guys, the Nibarites, was... Even if you want to be a pacifist, you need to have a decent military fleet. Because otherwise you're just going to get creamed. Um, so what I'm doing with them is I'm going to build up a military fleet and see if I can retake a system that was taken over. Um, we'll see. Man, there's no resources anywhere so far. I really hope the, um, the anomaly is on Ganieda. That would be really fitting. I think it would be cool if, um, the planets moved in Stellaris, but they don't really move. They just sort of sit there forever. At least I haven't seen them move. <laughs> I really like that the binary star system can't turn out well. It has actually, um, I seem to remember that binary systems are much more common than uh, single stars, so it's very unusual that our planet, um, or our star, the, the sun, uh, is alone. It's very unusual for stars to not have a companion. Ah, uh, there's no anomaly. Complete. No anomaly on Ganieda. Oh well. Hopefully they'll find something somewhere. I mean, there, there should be, really should be an anomaly. Okay, do I have any resources for anything else? Yes. Let's build... Let's just keep building Corvettes. Let's build another Corvette. Is there anything I can do on a Novo? Oh, yeah, well, you're... He's getting there. Build a hydroponic farm. I don't have any resources. That's fine. Let's pump up the jam a little. Get things going. I wonder what systems are nearby. Uh, when I first... The first game that I played, um, there was a neighboring star system, the Olimar system. And I'm like, that is... That's perfect. But, alas, I, I didn't finish that. Oh, I'm not going to Duranma. No way am I going to Duranma. You'll go to Gothra. Probably go to Gothra. Darius. Sasharim. I Isius? Isius? Rabinok. Probably go to Gothra first. Oh, there's Gothra right there. Main sequence. Orange dwarfs. Oh, Gothra doesn't have any planets. It's just an asteroid belt. That's really cool. Construction complete. All right, let's build. I'm gonna wait. I don't want to keep building fleets, but I will assign a leader. Let's get a leader here. Gale speed. I like that. Let's get the gale speed going. Anomaly found. Oh, where? Where is it? Alice. Oh, <laughs> that's great. Construction complete. Um, Alice is another great place for uh, anomalies to be. Um, mainly because it's called Alice, so I'm very happy that it was on Alice. Um, so survey Alice. Alice is very similar to um, Europa, uh, so it's very fitting. Oh, I can wait. Okay. What happened here? Ugh, ugh, don't get too close. My computer runs. Stellaris pretty well, but I'm not getting the greatest frame rate. 
Um, especially if I get really close to a planet, it doesn't, it turns into a slideshow. My computer is good, but it's not that great. Oh, Serafina has... Okay, good. Serafina has something that I can mine. Ugh, oh, that's good. <laughs> See, I don't know the right way to play this game, because I'm sure there's a right way. Just like there's always a right way to do things, and people get on your case and tell you you're playing the game wrong. Um, there's always some efficient way to play the game... And everyone else hates uh, how you play the game, and they get on your case about it. Anyway, um, my, under <laughs> my guess is that having other planets that you can mine in your solar system is probably a good thing. Um, so you don't have to rely on other solar systems to do it. It's almost done. Still scanning. You done? I mean, you're almost done. Oh, it's paused. God damn it. No. Oh. There's clear evidence that massive space battle took place in close orbit of Alice at some point in the last 5,000 years. The surface on one side of the moon is pockmarked with craters from stray weapons blasts and scans from the Dysta called Harmon have picked up s several hulks on the ground. These wrecked ships are in very poor condition, the fact that anything remains after the damage they must have sustained is a testament to their advanced design. Situation log updated. Oh, engineering research. I forgot to do all that. Um, let's do defense platform, colony ship, and solar panel network. Oh, I need to... I'll do that when I have a higher skill level for my people. Let's build another science ship. And eventually I'm going to build a mining ship on Serafina. Oh, jeez, I keep doing that. Go, just go. <laughs> okay, well, let's peek at the other solar systems here. We already looked at Gotha, let's look at Rabina. Ooh, it has a few planets there, and it is a red dwarf. Ooh! <laughs> Weeks after the Dice of Kaltarman's latest fruitful exploratory survey, Kakarian xenologists are practically falling over themselves to publish their takes on the finding on Alice. This fevered storm scientific community has had some negative yet temporary impact on pursuits in other fields. I'm gonna turn the music back down because for some reason, even though it's so low, it's really loud. Okay, there's Karat. What's Isius look like? Ooh, Isius is a white star. It's pretty cool. Seems like it has a, well, quite a few planets. This must be a gas giant. Nine! Nine planets in this solar system. Wow be going there soon. What about Darius? Darius has one. <laughs> one very big planet. Fairly big planet. Lando! Oh, Lando's a pulsar. Oh, Lando's a pulsar. Is that a pulsar? No, I don't think that's pulsar. 
I found a pulsar before. Is this a... Is this a black hole? I don't think this is a black hole. That doesn't look right for a black hole. I'm going here next. I don't care. <laughs> Once you're done, you're, you're, uh... You're gonna go to Lando. You'll have to... Mmm. Dang it. Stupid whatever you are. Unidentified fleet. Oh, wow, they're strong. I might have to go around them. Or I could just go straight to Lando. Why does it keep pausing? What... Okay, now he's going to Kanoon. Yeah, so all the ships are named after the second star there. Probably because it's a moving star. He says as though he's he's not the one who came up with the name naming convention. <laughs> Survey Canoon. See if there's anything on Canoon. Canoon would be a good place for anything. Nope. Construction okay. complete. Yay, there's another science ship. You, my friend, are gonna get a leader for one thing. Let's recruit another scientist. Spark of genius, research speed, computing, archaeologists. Alright. You go to Lando. See if you can go straight there. Don't pass through Daran Daran Daranma. That would be bad. Okay, here we are in the Lando system. Lando 1 is a molten world. Lando 3 is barren. System survey complete. Yay! Lando 2. Man, there's a lot of barren worlds in here. Let's go have you survey Gothra. I think once uh, this one finishes surveying Lando, then I will call the episode and uh, bid you farewell, and hopefully we'll be back with more Stellaris. But currently, let's just see what's in Lando, and let's see what Lando is. Oh, it's a neutron, neutron star, okay. In that, <laughs> that case, that makes sense. Okay, it's a neutron star. Not a black hole. There are black holes, but it's not not that one. That's not. A, that's not a anomaly found. Ooh, anomaly.
Yeah, survey it right now. Go back and survey that asteroid. It's really cool that Dothra has nothing but asteroids in its system. It's really cool. Oh, so this guy has a higher chance of finding anomalies. That's interesting. I wonder if I can do anything here. Um, let's build... Oh yeah, we were going to build a mining outpost. I wonder if I can do that. Oh, I can't. Never mind. Let's see if I can build a mine. An actual mine. <laughs> Actually, that might be useful. Is that a silo? That's a power plant. It might be useful to have a mining mineral silo. Let's build a mineral silo. Ooh! Asteroid... Oh! That's actually wrong. It's not the... A the asteroid is... That's the name of the ship. Whatever. Deep in the center, valuable materials. Ooh, X planet molecule. Ooh. X planet, wow. That's cool. So that used to be a planet, and it got blowed up. Let's build a mineral silo here, right? I don't want to build a mineral silo there, though. I'll build a mining network. And move you down there. I said I'll move you down there. There you go. Okay. Now he's going to Lando. See if Lando has any resources we can use. Oh, wow. These have a lot of... Uh, resources that we can use. Wow, look at AA. Wow. AA has five. I will definitely send a mining ship here eventually. There's nothing there. Let's see. Found anything on Lando. Nope, Lando itself doesn't have anything. Oh, I know it does. It has five uh, engineering uh, credits. That's another one we could look at. And Lando 1 has, uh, ore, or minerals. Lando 1 is big. Lando 1's a big molten world. That's a, it's the biggest plant in the so in the system. Um, and it's molten, which is really cool. It's a barren world with rings. That's pretty cool. Obviously, what excites me about this game most is looking at the different planets and the different stars. <laughs> sort of why I bought this game. This is funny. Look at this. Um, Lando 2 is a barren world with a uh, orange barren world orbiting it, whereas Lando 4 is an orange barren world with a frozen world. So these are sort of like inversions of each other. How's it going? We need more power. We need to build more power plants. See if Lando 5A has anything. System survey complete. All right. System nice. survey complete. Oh, and well, <laughs> in that case, thank you for watching. This has been the first episode of Morley Q Plays Stellaris. Um, maybe I'll have more in the future. We'll see. So I'll catch you next time.